And that was all on two, well, two panels, I think. Yeah, 45. Jane, you need to unmute. I did yes, it. Thanks. Did. I finally made it. Sorry. Hello. Hi. Hello, hello. Jane. Good evening. Good evening, and welcome to the regular board meeting for the town of Tustin for February the 9th, 2021. I will call the meeting to order. If you would join me in the pledge to the flag, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. One point four payment of bills. The general fund expended $323,121.72. The highway expended $187,579.57. The water fund, $24,483.20. The sewer fund, $26,419.79 for a total of $561,604.28. Our general fund, the large numbers, were the ambulance contract, the fire district contract, uh, and our youth. Makes for the majority of them. Uh, Jane, you went over the bills. Any questions, comments? No, all questions were answered in the office. I move okay. that we um, pay the bills as stated in the on the agenda. Second. Okay, I have a motion to pay the bills from Jane. I have a second from Jill. Bruce? Aye. Al? Aye. Jane? Aye. Aye. Jill? <laughs> and I have nothing. Okay. Uh, Division reports highway for January 2021 utilized 1,682 gallons of diesel fuel, 1,000. 536 gallons was for highway and 145 was for non-highway use. 304 gallons of gas, 31 for highway, 273 is non-highway. We patched holes on dirt and paved roads. They stockpiled sand for winter. Made sand and a soil mix for the winter. Cut trees on the Delaware Drive and Ackerman Road. They serviced equipment for the winter. Prepared washouts on Ackerman Road and Grassy Swamp. The out on snow related issues most of the time clean snow from around the town and the intersection the water and sewer completed their monthly drinking water wastewater sampling and reporting they completed their annual sodium nitrate primary inorganic chemical sampling and new quarterly pfoa pfos one dioxin sampling due to new requirements from the new york department of health they exercised generators at well number one in kirk road pump station Sold around fire hydrants and cloud driveways after the snowstorms, inspected the grinder and pump stations that were accessible, fixed two sewer main cleanouts, and put away 30 inch and 15 inch PVC lids delivered from Coberline for the septic tank lid replacement project, fixed a broken curb valve on Bridge Street with the help from the highway department. They replaced three water meter radio heads and one water meter base. They took one final water meter reading, they unloaded a chlorine and caustic soda delivery from SLAC. They replaced the barrel of caustic soda at well number one. They picked up 80 feet of 30 inch culvert pipe for the highway department for the septic tank lid replacement project. And they helped overline pump and clean out the dosing tanks at the sewer plant. Their financial report for January, they had $7,079.24 in metered uh, water rent, service charge of $254.74, total received. $7,333.98. Sewer rents for $18,795.29. Sewer service charge of $1.50 for a total received of $18,796.79 for a total of $26,137.77. The building department code enforcement for January conducted 17 construction inspections, 10 certificates of occupancy, 13 building permits, one new home, three renovations, alterations, or additions, one camping, two driveway permits, two electrical permits, one lawn permit, two septic permits, one well, 
12C on violation searches. Clerk attended training on 111 on Connect Explore, a new county-based program. The building inspector and clerk attended training on 115, ethics and enforcing the code, and 115, prescriptive residential wood deck construction, and 119, working with electric elected officials and understanding everyone's role in planning. Monies collected by the office from January 1 to 31st are $4,415.90. The assessor for January, for the month of January, many calls were received about the undelivered tax bills. Initially, help was given through tax lookup, but when there was a problem identified and the trusted information was removed, I could no longer help and had to refer them to Crystal. The Sullivan County Assessors Association met via Zoom. Most notable information was that we may no longer be able to convert basic star or enhanced star for those turning 65 this year. This will have to be done through the Department of Taxation as a star rebate check. Final say on this issue will be available in your state budget is adopted in April. We received our analysis of sales numbers and set the 2021 level assessment equalization rate and residential assessment rate. The numbers allowed us to select a rate of 51%. It was expected that the level of assessment would drop as home prices had appeared to increase during the recent months. Our 2020 Equalization rate was 52.75% and the change to 51% will only raise the calculated market values of properties printed on tax roll and tax bills by a small amount, approximately $4,600 on a property with a $100,000 assessed valuation. We had a similar raise this past year, which did not cause many complaints to be voiced. Much time was spent on improving my home workspace for the coming assessing season. In 2020, I started working only from home and did not have set hours setups for proper filing for different projects that were filed in the town office. I have sorted the files and no longer need at home and have arranged work papers and parcel number orders so they can be filed away in the town office cabinets. This would have been completed at the end of January, but I met with <laughs> that was a new door to the town hall, which also has a new lock. <laughs> and uh, oops. Kind of files and paperwork. We'll also pull the rest of the files needed for the building permits and inspections that I've been doing in March. <clears throat> As you can see, I did not read that prior to the meeting. <laughs> uh, that was submitted by Ken. Uh, Sue, the Upper Delaware Council. Ah, hi, everybody. Hey, well, um, yes, here we go. Um, I don't think there's anything actually too new going on here, but there is a, there are some dates that are important. Um, the litter sweep effort that we're making to do this in April, the, uh, prop, the week of Earth Day, um, there's going to be a Zoom meeting on Wednesday, February 17th at six o'clock and you can attend and I included that link right there. So if anybody wants links that and you can't open them, please just send me an email. I included my email in this in this report. So I'd be happy to send you that link. It's it's really about people who have agreed to participate and allowing the leaders from each town to meet one another online. And our representative is Evan Padua and um, anybody from any of the volunteer groups who are interested in spending a day going down to the various accesses that we have, river accesses and the roads that lead down to them to clean up those areas in the spring are welcome. And, I think it's a great opportunity also to pull in people that maybe don't usually volunteer, but would be up for doing something like this. Because, you know, once you get started, the next thing you know, you might be volunteering for the library or the beautification group or some other group. <clears throat> so I think it's a really good effort and it deserves everybody's support. And Evan is the other person who you can feel free to get in touch with on this. Um, the TMR boat launch. It's, uh, it's really progressed very well. So I just included in your report, Evan's report, because he's on the worm committee, he follows this. And especially as a fishing guide, it's a person, it's a personal interest. So um, they've really made some progress. There are blueprints, if anybody's interested, it would be a concrete boat ramp, um, I believe at the upstream end of the 10 mile river access. And the uh, consultants have given some now provided money figures. So now you can start working on discovering where the money's gonna come from. 
And the little bit that I've read about it is the Boy Scouts are in favor, but they are not, um, uh, they're gonna, their ba basic question is, how, and where does the money come from? And Sullivan County, just to give you a little background, Sullivan County has want, has had a uh, improvement of access grant program going on for a long time. And they're very willing to look at switching some of that money into this boat ramp. So it's progressing very well. Um, does anybody have any questions about that? Okay. Um, where else are we? Um, the print on my screen and the lack of glasses, which I lost, is means I got to read my own writing here. Um, GIS mapping of the river corridor. That's another long-term project and it's in conjunction with Shippensburg University and the National Park Service spearheads it, but the UDC is completely involved in it as well. And so the NPS land planner's name is Cody Hendricks. Our planner, as you know, is Shannon Salento. And they're gonna probably um, come up with a presentation on this at some point in time. But basically we're gonna get an update on where this project is. The GIS mapping of the corridor means that for instance, the planning board could via the computer determine exactly where the river corridor line border is and do their planning accordingly. Um, Sue? Yes. I thought we did the GIS mapping um, with a UDC grant a couple of years ago. Am we I did, but this is the entire corridor. Okay. All and, right. and it's been going on for quite a while because it's extensive and the app, you know, it's not so much that the, the mapping itself, but I think I'm guessing here, but it's the computer programming that's involved to let everybody have it as a program. So sort of like part one is the mapping and part two is that you or I could go online and go, oh, there's my house and there's my, my you know, borders and there's the river corridor and so forth and there's Tustin. So that's the end. <laughs> I don't think we're at the end at this point. <laughs> okay. um, ah, Fegels Lake. The only thing is that it's Sh Shannon, as our planner, has attended all the meetings of the planning board on the project. As far as I know, it's moving along well. And the Upper Delaware Council really does appreciate that Tustin involved them right from the beginning in the project. So we therefore don't have surprises. Um, okay, project review workbook. The project review workbook, of course, is what all projects, the basis of the reviews that happen on Beagles Lake, for instance. Um, it's a new workbook. They uh, rolled it out virtually on January 23rd. It's a video and it's very well done from what I understand. I had a work conflict, so I couldn't participate in that call, but the video is available on the UDC's website. So it's not as, it's not as boring <laughs> as if you were sitting there trying to read it. Um, and again, that is what every, that's what all the reviews are based on is the workbook. So planning board and zoning board would be particularly interested. Annually, they want the co all code enforcement officers to provide a um, update on all the permits that were issued, et cetera, et cetera. They, last year was the first year that the Park Service really insisted on that, I think. And it, there was a lot of catch up, but now it's just an update. Now it would be just 2000, 2020. Um, and Shan will get that out to Jim Crowley at, you know, very soon, very soon because they have a February due date. Skinner's Falls Bridge, which I think we're all kind of, you know, growing up here interested in. Um, Lori's been invited to join a project advisory committee. And she was encouraged by that because they're talking about alternatives and everyone wants the bridge preserved. The Park Service put it on their list of culturally important sites. It's on the list of historic, it's on the historic register. So it'll be, she, Lori will keep us up to date on what, how that evolves. She attends all meetings on bridges. So if anybody has questions on bridges, you can always check in with her. 
Um, little things of interest, uh, TMR Scout Museum is going to do webinars on February 18 at 7 on the DNH Aqueduct and on March 11, the Battle of Minisink. The on Black History Month, I they're doing uh, this on the UDC's Facebook page, honoring people who live here, people of color who have lived here and worked here and retired here. And I, I reminded them of Luxton Lake. So they were very happy to think that they, they're gonna track down some history on Luxton Lake and put it on their Facebook page. Uh, from the DRBC, they have a climate change initiative and they're offering scholarships to high school science teachers. So if anybody knows a high school science teacher who would be interested, uh, they could get in touch with Ashley at the UDC and she would have more information on that. And that's it. If anybody has any questions. Not a question, but I'd just send those guys um, about, about um, Luxon Lake to Tina Spangler. That's who yes. I mentioned. And I yeah. think one, Ashley, or um, they know Tina. I think uh, Shannon knows Tina. So that, yeah, worked out good. Worked out well. So that's, uh, that's all I have. Oh, and uh, Ben, just one thing. I'm wondering if it's possible to get a hard copy of our agenda. Would I just ask Crystal for that? Like she could send it to she me. She can email you one. Yeah, that would be yeah, great. She can do it in any. I did email it. It might be in your email now. She said. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Brandy with the Energy Committee. Hi. Um, okay. So the horse status report. Uh, a hauler left Seattle towing our horse, that's our digester, um, on January 15th and arrived in Narrowsburg at the Highway Barn site on January 20th. On January 21st, the Tustin Highway Department leveled the ground where the horse, which is a shipping container, um, was going to be placed on the ground. Uh, Prestige Towing offered to lift the 15,000 pound horse off the unit off the truck and onto the ground for free as a gift to our town. And we want to thank them a lot. So that was really nice of them. Um, Scott Porter and Sean Harrington placed the five 10 foot long uh, pressure treated railroad ties beneath the unit to have it off the ground. Um, and many thanks to all who helped place the horse, highway and prestige and the guys and um, Jennifer and Scott Porter's proposed food scrap digester has been realized after two hard, uh, long, hard year, uh, years of long, hard work uh, by the TC and a fully funded grant from the DEC. It was $138,100 grant. Um, then the TEC had a meeting. Um, the horse will be fully operational this spring, and all the volunteer operators are going to be fully trained and certified. Uh, Tustin food merchants and restaurants have mostly all been trained and uh, how to collect and deliver their litted buckets of food scraps once operational. Um, actually, they're all trained now. I think, Jill, you got trained to go? Yep. Okay, so even the new, um, the botanist, which is a new restaurant in town, they got trained as well. We're going to start um, accepting food scraps from restaurants and food merchants, and then we'll open it up to the community after we get this down, the operational down. Um, the horse, let's see, will pr uh, produce bio, uh, probiotic plant food and biogas, and it's going to be the first municipality food scrap digester in the U.S. to be powered by a municipality solar array. So we're really excited about that. Um, the next steps will be having um, Narrowsburg Electric connect the horse to the pole behind it. Um, Ben has talked to them and uh, he's going to be going there and working with Scott. We placed the horse very close to that pole, so it's in the perfect spot. Uh, we can't, we do not exceed, uh, I think it's 950 pounds a week. That means that we're small, it's a small operation and the DEC has approved our operation. They actually funded it. 
Um, the first contributors uh, will be the restaurants, blah, blah, blah. Um, hold on. The TEC is going to set up an informational tent at the Saturday Farmer's Market at the Union in the spring to hand out flyers, which we have, and to talk to residents about the digester. And in time, we'll include um, them dropping off. I'm going to provide free buckets to them, too. We got all these free buckets from um, Weiss Market, which was very generous of them because they liked our project. Um, Jennifer Porter was interviewed on JFF, and uh, she talked about the horse. Her expertise is in waste management. TEC has a link to the interview on their Facebook page. So it's uh, the Tustin Energy Committee Facebook page. We have a lot of followers at this point. Um, soft plastic total collected in Tustin to date is three and a half tons of soft plastic, all delivered to Trex. And um, we get a free bench made out of recycled material by Trex. Every six months, we have to raise, uh, we have to collect 500 pounds. And we do that in three weeks. So we're on our fourth bench now. We just ordered our fourth bench. There's another one in front of the library. You can check that out. Two on the town deck. And the LED street lights after nine years of diligent work, Town Tustin now owns their 113 street lights. And we'll have all of our street lights replaced with fixtures housing LED street lights. Um, Main Street's gonna have six decorative lantern fixtures, kind of have a historical feel. And uh, all the rest will be cobra head fixtures. All the bulbs have the same warm, low intensity light, a healthy light. Um, NIPA, New York Power Authority, has already sent their electrician to Tustin and he ready the poles for the install. All the crew crews have been quarantined, but they're now beginning installations in Sullivan County and um, across the particip participating towns. Tustin was the first town in the county to sign up for the program. And I keep nudging them and reminding them that we should be the first to install, but um, we're just waiting on the COVID delay, but we're really like this close after nine years. So um, then, so look for the installers in your community. Once the install is completed, the crew is going to return in a few following months uh, to install smart city nodes, nodes to allow for Wi-Fi on Main Street and as well as dimming capability in which uh, whichever lights we choose. That'll save us energy and uh, we won't turn off your lights if you don't want them off. But um, if there's light pollution where people live and they would like it reduced, we can, we'll talk to you about that. I just attended a two hour seminar about uh, the nodes and we get $20,000 free grant money for those nodes. So that's exciting. Cheers. <laughs> anyway, so, this year is a 10th year anniversary of the TEC. And Congratulations. We, thank you. And uh, the TEC was appointed in 2011 by the town board. Um, TEC stood behind the town of Tustin's. I'm just going to briefly just say a few things that we've done over the 10 years because I'm pretty proud of it and my uh, committee. So, uh, by the way, Star Hesse and I are original members. And thank you, Star, for doing everything that you do all the time. Totally great committee because everybody's so passionate about the environment. Um, TEC stood behind the town of Tustin banning fracking law in uh, October 2011. TEC had town hall insulated whenever, wherever necessary in 2012. TEC took the New York State Climate Smart Community Pledge in February 2015. TEC completed thorough energy audits of all town buildings and facilities completed in October 2015. TEC replaced indoor and all indoor and outdoor lighting with energy efficient LED lighting inside and outside town owned buildings and facilities. Uh, TEC installed a solar array to provide power to all the buildings of the uh, municipality buildings and facilities in 2017. TEC they designated an area town hall for e waste, electronic waste. TEC began a recycling campaign, educating merchants and residents about the environmental dangers of plastic bags and straws. Um, TEC was awarded the UDC Community Service Award in April 2015. The CEC uh, supplied Tustin Recycles tote bags to all households um, in Tustin as an alternative to plastic bags in 2018 in anticipation of the New York State Plastic Bag Law, which is now. Um, TEC created custom stickers labeling all town receptacles for public use, separating trash and recycling. Uh, 
Um, I'd like to see that adhere to more, but what am I going to do? Um, we're trying. Um, TEC was certified the 19th town in New York State, a bronze certified climate smart community in 2018. That's a big deal. I mean, 19th town in the state. Uh, that's based on your accomplishments. We received $5,000 with certification. TEC supported instituting a Tustin Repair Cafe servicing the community four times a year, a town hall, recycling household items rather than discarding them. That's Jill Padua's project. Thank you, Jill. Um, uh, I'm, I myself actually was awarded the UDC Community Service Award in, 20, uh, in 2019 because of the TEC accomplishments. The CEC um, received a New York State grant. I told you about that for the horse. Uh, 40% of, of food in this country is wasted and it goes to, um, to landfills and we're trying to approach, you know, deal with that. And I think we're gonna be a model for other towns. DC uh, began a soft plastic recycling collection initiative, you know about that. And since August, 2019, three and a half tons um, collected. The CEC uh, entered a, a contract for ownership of our streetlights from our utility. We've um, we just told you it's this close. Um, we are now applying for silver certification with Climate Smart Communities Program um, after a numerous after the bronze um, accomplishment. We've we accomplished a lot more than that. Um, now we're also applying for a NYSERDA Clean Energies Program grant. That's a huge grant and I'm really excited about that. That could fund any of our new ideas for the future. And, and that's it, look at that. So um, thank you to the TEC and everybody on there because you guys do great work and I know your heart is in it. And I really appreciate that. Thank you, Brandy and, and the TEC. Yes, yes thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Brandy, I have a question for you. Oh boy, what? <laughs> No, no, it's a simple one. Um, but first of all, thank you, the whole committee. Uh, really, you do fabulous work. Um, somebody asked me, and I couldn't answer it. Has a decision been made? What will happen with the um, the um, uh, the the end product of the of the horse? In other words, the fertilizer and such. Has it? Right been made how that it, where it's going and how it's to be used well we're going to offer all of the participants who bring us their food scraps we're going to give them the free fertilizer it's in liquid form we have buckets for that because i keep collecting buckets from wife and um boy this uh, thing i'm reading what i'm saying and it's not translating right um Anyway, so yeah, we, we're offering that. It's like liquid for liquid gold for gardeners and um, anybody who has an interest in it, please let me know because we're gonna give it out free for the first year. And then the following years, we're going to um, collect money for it because it's a great asset and we can put bank that in the TEC bank account to be used for, um, for just projects in the future that are sustainable. Um, that's our plan. Okay, great. So there is a plan and then I, know what to say the next time I'm asked. Thank That's you. That's the plan. Yep. Yep. Thank you. And let me know if anybody has any interest in that. No, I think they will. I know they will. I have a list, really long list so far. <laughs> any other questions for Brandy? Oh, someone does. Can you make me a public? Yeah. Um, I and Brandy, you should have an email. Um, they're going to start your street lights tomorrow. What? Whoa, really? Whoa! Oh, she was so close. <laughs> oh, that's boy. fabulous. I must say that. Um, yeah. I must say that. Uh, you know, nine years ago, uh, Star and I drove in. Um, I don't remember what town that is. It was along the Hudson River, and uh, Jen Metzger was the councilwoman back then, and she gave us the whole master plan how to get the LED streetlights for a small town, and I. I want to thank Jen Metzger, who did this incredible work leading yeah. us. And I, I can't wait to tell her about that. Great. Thanks, Ben. That's exciting. And yeah. I think Danielle <laughs> has a question for you. Well, it's a, just a general question. Oh, okay. Um, you designated an area in, at the town hall for e-waste. Is that still available? 
for, for what? Oh, for e-waste? It should be upstairs. I don't. I'm, it's it's like in that closet upstairs. Ask Jocelyn; she would know. Okay. Yeah. yeah they just, I was just made aware of that. Thank you. Yep. Uh, thank you, Brandy. Uh, thank you. Jane Uh, my turn. Yes, your turn. Grant. Okay, grants. Okay. Uh, the Little Lake Erie Bridge project is proceeding. Uh, I know I tell you that every month, but they're still in the process of obtaining the uh, temporary right of way from the surrounding property owners so that in the spring when they start construction, they'll have permission um, from everybody so they can get the temporary bridge installed. The UDC grant for the comprehensive plan, OMG, I'm so pleased with this group. Uh, we're right on target, maybe even a little ahead of target. The project is nearing the end. So by February 22nd, that's right around the corner, the draft comprehensive plan will be available for everybody to review. It'll be posted on the town website. It will be on the town Facebook page and Crystal said she'd put it on Narrowsburg, he and his Unite. And there'll be a hard copy in town hall and we'll provide the library with a, a copy. I encourage anybody um, and everybody to take a look at it because there will be an opportunity for you to comment on the contents. And the first public comment session or public hearing meeting will be held remotely on March 22nd. So that'll be by Zoom and the link will be posted on the town website. Now, just an FYI for everybody, this meeting will give the public the opportunity to comment on the contents of the plan. The responses to the comments will not be discussed at the meeting. Rather, the comments then will be forwarded and reviewed by the Comprehensive Plan Committee, and the plan will make appropriate um, uh, adjustments. Uh, adjust, adjustments. Then there'll be a final public hearing, which is scheduled for the first week of April. And once that happens, um, then the town board can adopt it and we're off and running. So this has been a, a project uh, run, uh, going on for some time and I'm delighted that it's coming to an end. For the water renovations, uh, we continue to seek external funding for this project. Um, it, you know, COVID really kind of put a damper on the funding that's normally uh, available through the state. But it's believed that those traditional infrastructure grants will be released soon. And Delaware Engineering is monitoring uh, those announcements for us. That's it. Any questions? Um, Jane, I would just like to point out to folks the importance of the comp plan and to, to, to have input into it and know what it says because it dictates what our zoning will look like and it probably reflects to an extent what our zoning is now, but it will also dictate into the future. Comp plans uh, are valid for how long, like seven years, something like that? Well, um, our comp plan, we are actually suggest uh, that we review it every five years. Okay, so reviewed every five years, but it's a, it's a look at the future and it's really important. Everyone who owns property here, it will affect zoning, which affects your use of your property, uh, what can be built near you, all kinds of uh, And issues. it also uh, gives justification for applying for certain grants. It shows... Yeah shows the grant to, uh, granting agency that ooh, we didn't pick this out of our hat, that it's part of our uh, big plan for the future. Yeah, it, the New York State Constitution gives a lot of power to a comprehensive plan Yes, uh, in terms of our, our environment here. So thank you and the committee for doing it. No, oh, it's been a great committee. Great Let committee. me uh, chip in here with just a quick comment along that line. Uh, I urge everybody, as Jane just did, to read it when it is available, when it is posted. It's over 100 pages, so it sounds like a homework assignment. Uh, but it's very readable. It's done in plain English. It's not like reading code. 
you can work your way through it. There's lots of charts, pictures, maps, all sorts of interesting stuff. But as Jane and Susan were saying, we've done our part now. It's now up to the public and the town board to basically reverse engineer the process. And that is take it apart, go through it and tell us what we might be missing. That's gonna be more important to the final product. If there's anything that we've overlooked, not covered, not emphasized enough, please let us know. Of course, there'll be negative comments. You always get somebody who's not happy about something. But really what we need the people to do is read the final product and tell us what we're missing. You know, if there's anything that needs to be added, please let us know. Good comment, Mike, good comment. Thank you, Jane. Moving into old business, uh, 3.1 <coughs> building demolition. Uh, we had spoken in the past about having the old highway barn on the flats taken down. Um, I've spoken with the highway superintendent. I've spoken with the building department. Uh, they are in agreement with it. If the board is in agreement with that, I would make a motion to authorize the highway superintendent to remove that building while, while they're in their slow time. They'll be able to rent a uh, rent a piece of equipment and they'll be able to do all of the work themselves and use, uh, if we don't get any funding for it, they can use our tipping fees from the county towards the uh, cleanup of it. Any questions on that at all? Yes. I thought the county okay. has um, some sort of program for derelict buildings. They have a rust program. We can see if it'll, it'll pay for it. Um, or pay towards it. Uh, I don't remember exactly what the amount was, I, I, whether it was 15 or I, I think Shannon would know next door at the UDC, but we can give them a call and, and find yeah, out if it'll... Shannon is aware of what the county is doing on that. Yeah, for sure. And so, I mean, we might be able to save the tipping fee then. Mm -hmm. Correct. And can I ask who... Um, but I'm looking for... Sorry. That's okay. I'm just looking for uh, authorization for the highway superintendent to, uh, to go ahead and remove that building. Uh, any questions from the board as far as that authorization or the motion to authorize him to do that? Make that motion. Uh, I'll make a motion. I have a motion from Al. I have a motion from Al and a second from Bruce. Um, Jill? Hi. Jane? Hi. Jane's frozen. Quiet. Uh, Al. Hi. Bruce. Hi. And I am an I. Uh, Three point two old business. Uh, we had the temporary assistant to the uh, Narrowsburg Water and Sewer Clerk and the bookkeeper uh, doing cross training on the bookkeeper. Uh, we had held that to this meeting. Um, I'm looking to continue that further. Uh, we do have some time when uh, the regular water and sewer clerk and the bookkeeper are going to be out uh, due to a medical. And I would like to have the board continue that position at least uh, for the foreseeable future. Well, I make a motion that we continue that. Uh, Can we put it in 10 to 15 hours? Can we put an end date on I'm that? Sorry, Jane. Can we put an end? We can. Yeah. Do you want to? You want to go month to month with this? That's fine. Yes, I would like to do that. Okay. So um, I have a motion from Bruce to continue the temporary assistance to the water and sewer clerk and the bookkeeper at 15 hours per week to carry us until the March 9th meeting. Does that sound good, Jane? Yes. Um, I will second that. Uh, Al. Aye. Bruce? Aye. Jane? Aye. Jill? Aye. And I am an aye. Uh, that, does the board have any other old business that I am missing and not on the agenda? If not, I will open the floor for 10 minutes for public comments. Uh, I have a question. Um, it, okay. The uh, highway barn that you're going to take down, the town owns the property there? It does, yes. Okay, any plans for it? At this point, 
Uh, no immediate plans. Okay, thank you. I have a question about the horse. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, I don't know if Randy is still here, whether or not anybody knows, um, is there gonna be any sort of smell associated with that unit no. um, since it has all of that? So it's all self-contained, there will be absolutely all no smell. Okay, that's my concern. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I have a question. Wanda, yes. Hi, Wanda. Hi. First of all, Star's trying to do to have a question as well after me. My question is for Jane Luxinger. Did you talk to Ben about the application to the, the ZBA for interpretation and updating that application? I sent him your email. I forwarded him your email. Okay. So I'd like to know if the town can actually update that application for interpretation to your ZBA. Uh, I, that is just um, updated according to the New York State guidelines, correct? Well, the application is totally different than what you have now. Right now you have it a generic where check a interpretation, but the New York State requires it basically the application is recalled interpretation to reverse the code enforcer's decision. So when you go to your ZBA for an interpretation, it's about the permit that the code enforcer just issued and you're allowed to get in there and you know it's your civil right to, to be able to do this. And that's what you want posted on the uh, website, correct? I would like the application updated. Nico has samples from other um, uh, townships that I did research on. So all you basically have to do is review them put your name on the top and make that official. Okay, so we need to see those samples from Nico. If you can't find them, please get in touch with me and I'll research again and find them. Okay. Um, yeah, if Nico's got those, there'd be no reason why we can't. And then what we can do is get with the uh, attorney for the town, have him review, review that. Um, because, you know, with the comp plan, we're also going to be doing some zoning rewrites. So it fits right in there. That sounds like something we could probably look at before, uh, you know, even before the zoning starts taking place. I appreciate it. I've been trying for really a long time now. Thank you, Wanda. Okay, thank you. And remember, Star is trying to get in to talk. Star, you got to mute yourself. Yeah. She has to unmute herself. She can. Oh, Star, you just got to unmute yourself. It's there she is. Okay, go. Okay, that's the first time that that unmute button has worked. So I'm just feeling my way. Thank you, Wanda, for the intro that got me on here. And since my picture wasn't up, I couldn't even sit here like an idiot waving my hands. So the first thing I would like to know is, I would really appreciate it if there was some way to get the agendas for these meetings before the meeting. I was trying to follow along with this agenda on the screen jerking up and down and back and forth. I couldn't follow it and I don't wanna to have to write a million things when it's all written there for me. If I could have that before the meeting, it would be very helpful. That's comment number one. Um, I just like to know where are these meetings posted? Um, I tried to find, I understand that there was a planned meeting that was canceled. One of the first uh, meetings of the month, the first uh, Tuesday, and I looked all over for that. I couldn't find it. And when I went on to the, um, the main page under meetings and the minutes of the meetings, the last thing that was posted, they had a space for agenda, but the last meeting that was posted was I think January 12th. So how often do those meetings get posted? And certainly for an agenda for a current meeting, you've got to have someplace else that people can access that and print it out before the meeting so that they can use it reasonably well and my last comment would be i just have to say sorry go ahead no go ahead okay the, i just wanted to make my last comment to say that i think the job that brandy has done shepherding these project projects through is just incredible i was sitting here listening to the litany of things that she's accomplished i'm very sorry we lost her from the board but i'm very glad that she continued to make these amazing improvements for Tustin. So we have that 
silver certification coming up. I understand there's a, just a ton of money you can access from that. And it's only because she's really stayed on this stuff and pushed and pushed and pushed. Anybody that can bring nice egg to heal has got my vote off the bat. <laughs> anyway, that's my, that's my spiel. Thank you, uh, Ben, if you're gonna be able to enlighten me on how to access some of these other meetings and the minutes for them or the agendas for them. Uh, for the agenda, they should be posted. I believe they're posted on the uh, website. That's where I've got them because all of our uh, IDs are the same for the Zoom meetings. Uh, okay, the Zoom meeting numbers are are there, but it, the the agendas aren't there. Half the time, the meetings aren't there. It's just that general. This is the board monthly meeting number. This is the board special meeting number. It doesn't say anything about what the meeting is for or when it's going to be. Okay, well, the town board meets the first Tuesday. Right, I saw that. For the, the special meetings, and then the regular meeting is on the second Tuesday. There are times if the board right. does not have business that they, they will be canceled like the last one. The next, okay, the you next just, meeting that we're going to... I'm sorry? You just put the calendar up. Is that where these meetings are posted so people know what's going on? The calendar <laughs> as opposed to where it says meetings? Yeah. Yes, it is in the calendar. Can you throw that back yeah, up there? Also good one. Um, ben, could I make a suggestion that for as far as the agenda goes, I also like to have a like a hard copy of the agenda, but maybe Crystal could just attach that when she sends out her Zoom invitation. You know, she said- Well, she did today, Susan. It, it was there, the agenda was- oh, And I missed it, okay. <laughs> well, that would, well, that would work for me if I'm going to look, I'm looking for the Zoom invitation. And at the same time, I could print out a copy of the agenda. That would be wonderful. Well, and to whom does she send this uh, invitation? Uh, because I never got any notice. The only way I found out about it was going into the, the, the part where it says all every Tuesday, second Tuesday of the month is, is the general meeting. So if, if, if Crystal is making a broadcast uh, notification that this is the meeting number for tonight and this is the agenda, that's fine. I'd love it. Okay. You can also post it on Facebook. That would probably be the easiest thing to do. Okay. I do, I'm not on Facebook. I don't use Facebook. I don't know you how don't, to access it. Um, because we're a public entity, you don't need to have an account for Facebook. Um, you can just Google uh, Town of Tuscan Facebook and you'll be able to go right in. You don't need an account for it. And that shows it in a way that you can actually find what you're looking for, whether the meeting agendas and things like that, it's listed there under that title? Yeah, it'll be, it'll, what, it, what it'll be is when you click on the Facebook page, it'll, it'll, it goes by date. So when she posts something today, it'll be on there. It'll post the Zoom information. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Is there any other public comments? If there's no other public comment, I'm going to move into new business. Uh, 5.1 on new business is a custom youth agreement. Put forth in the form of a motion resolved that the supervisor is hereby authorized to sign the agreement with the custom youth as presented the agreement this agreement between the Town of Tustin and the Tustin Youth Commission, whereas the Town of Tustin wishes to facilitate the funding of the Tustin Youth Commission for the benefit of the youth of the Town of Tustin, and whereas the Tustin Youth Commission wishes to institute activities for the benefit of the youth of the Town of Tustin, it is therefore agreed by and between the parties that one, that the Town of Tustin shall fund the Tustin Youth Commission to the extent of $7,700, the $7,700 above stated shall be paid to the Tustin Youth Commission as reimbursements are received from the state of New York and that the Tustin Youth Commission will use these funds dispersed to them by the town of Tustin for the use and benefit of the youth in the town of Tustin. Any questions at all from the board members? Well, these, are, these are funds coming from the state that are going to be transferred to this program. Yeah, so we've also uh, budgeted money towards this from our own budget to assist them with that. And that's the exact amount that we budgeted? Yes. Okay. Uh, resolve. So did you I'll make that, that motion? motion? I'm sorry? 
who made the motion? Is there is the motion um, made and seconded? Uh, did you just second that, Jane? I thought I heard yes. you say you seconded. Okay, that. I don't care. I'll second it if it needs a second. It does. Thank you. Okay. Jill. Aye. Jane. Aye. Al. Aye. Bruce. Aye. And I am an aye. <clears throat> Uh, 5.2 is the ambulance agreement. Resolved that the town board hereby accepts the agreement for ambulance protection as presented. Contract for ambulance protection. This agreement made as of February 9th, 2021, by and between the town board and the town of Tustin, municipality located in the town of Tustin, County of Sullivan, state of New York, here and after referred to as a town and the Tustin Ambulance Corps. A nonprofit membership corporation loaded at, located at Narrowsburg, Sullivan County, New York, here and after referred to as the Ambulance Corps, which has been established in the town of Tusk, the Ambulance Corps, which has been and is providing necessary and appropriate ambulance and emergency services within the town of Tusk and surrounding territory under the plan of ambulance service adopted by the Ambulance Corps. And the town duly authorized the contract with the Ambulance Corps for ambulance service when and if required to the town of Tusk by the terms and provisions here in set forth, and whereas this contract has also been authorized by the authorized and delegated representatives of the Ambulance Corps, thereby is mutually agreed as follows. One, the Tustin, the town of Tustin does hereby engage the service of the Ambulance Corps to furnish ambulance services within the town of Tustin. The Ambulance Corps agrees to furnish that ambulance service in the manner following. To wit, the Ambulance Corps shall at all times during the period of this agreement be subject to call for attendance upon any emergency accident, illness, and or occurrence in said town and where notified by alarm or telephone call from any person within the town of an accident situation and or occurrence where the service of an ambulance required shall respond and attend at the place or places where required without delay with one or more ambulance with the appropriate emergency medical equipment and trained members of the ambulance corps. Upon arriving at the scene where the service of the ambulance corps required the members of the crew of the Ambulance Corps so attending shall proceed diligently and in every way reasonably necessary and suggest in order to effect the appropriate emergency treatment and or transportation to the nearest and most convenient hospital or other medical facility with the purpose and intention of saving the life and or preserving the health of the individual or individuals involved. Two, in consideration of furnishing the ambulance services as here and above provided, including the equipment, medical supplies, and trained ambulance crew, as before said, the ambulance corps shall receive the sum of $20,000 per annum in the town conveyance and agrees to pay the same to the ambulance corps annually. All monies to be paid under any provision of this agreement shall be a charge upon the town of Tustin to be assessed and levied upon the taxable property within the town of Tustin and collected with the town taxes. This agreement shall continue for a period of one year and shall be deemed to commence from January 1st, 2021 to December 31st, 2021 inclusive. This agreement may be renewed and extended by mutual consent annually upon the same terms and conditions for a period not to exceed four additional years. Any notice required or provided for in this agreement shall be served in the same manner as required for the service of the summons in the Supreme Court. The parties here too have duly executed and delivered this agreement the day and year first of all would. Any questions from the board members regarding this? Uh, uh, that um, is, and I'm have, assuming have that's, that's the exact amount budgeted as well? That is the, yes, that is the amount that is budgeted in the budget. I thought so. I just don't have the budget in front of me. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'll second that motion. I'm assuming <laughs> you made the motion. Jill? Aye. Jane? Aye. Al? Aye. Bruce? Aye. And I am an aye. Uh, 5.3 is to advertise for stone and sand bids. Resolved that the town clerk is hereby directed and authorized to advertise for bid request for stone and sand for the 2021 year. As per the recommendation of the highway superintendent, Donald Niger, bids shall be read, read open and read aloud, okay, open and read aloud on okay. March 2nd, 2021 at the special meeting agenda workshop for the town board and awarded on March 9th, 2021 at the town board regular meeting. I would make a motion uh, that the clerk is hereby directed and authorized to advertise for the superintendent of highways. 
Second. 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 Second from Bruce. Uh, Jane. Aye. Jill. Aye. Al. Aye. Bruce. Aye. And I am an I. <clears throat> Five point four: The Narrowsburg Beautification. Uh, the Sullivan Renaissance Grant Application Project for Little Lake Erie Shorefront Lake Street. Uh, the Daris for Beautification is asking permission from the town to plan on town property along the slope of the lake along Lake Street. The project description is under the guidance of Sullivan Renaissance and watershed planning with Sullivan County Soil and Water Conservation. This project intends to help stabilize the stream side of Little Lake Erie by planting three native eastern red flood trees and native shrubs whose root systems will stabilize and control erosion, protect wildlife by providing coverage for nesting and food for wildlife with berry production, shrubs, and nectar for pollinators. The trees chosen are mid-sized and will not interfere with electrical wires. They are tolerant for being in the proximity to uh, the three black walnut trees already on site that are in decline or dead along the lakefront. Uh, action steps, the Sullivan Renaissance suggests the town clusters participation of a plan to eradicate the invasive species Japanese knotweed along the lake. The plan involves a five-year commitment by the town highway department to cut back the knotweed three times a year, spring, summer, and fall, not allowing it to grow over two feet tall. This way, the root system is exhausted and the colony dies back. The project offers opportunities for engaging youth by volunteering or preparing the site for planting trees, maintenance of newly planted trees and shrubs, and learning about native species and protective wildlife when serving and maintaining the health of the lake. Um, Wanda, we've got you on here, correct? Well, actually, hi, uh, this is Karen Morris. I, I submitted that proposal with, along with uh, Naris okay, Beautification. And what, what level grant um, are you applying for, Karen? We're thinking of the community beautification grant. And, and have you spoken to Maybe Don we... Niger about the five-year commitment? Yeah, I... I spoke to Don about that, Jane. But uh -huh. Before we get too far into that, when are we looking at these plantings because of the work that's being done down there? Right, that was my question. I don't want them to go planting. Right. You know, they go planting and all of a sudden the culvert comes in and they destroy everything down there because it's quite a swath that they're going to be working in. I didn't think that was the side they were talking about. It's the other side, of the Lake Street side. Um, um, there's a private property uh, that abuts the, the bridge there. So it's it's beyond that private property. Um, I think it's about probably about 200 or so feet with a, a steep okay, slope. So they're gonna be the... Okay. I'm sorry. That's good. I, I wrongly assumed that it was down by where they're doing the culvert work. Oh no, the culvert meaning the bridge? Yes. No, yes. nowhere near that. No. Yeah, I read I that. It was, it's okay, Ben. They're going across like from um, Tony Ritter's, that area. Okay. From, from about the church mm -hmm. down to where the uh, highway guard is at the end before the turn. And I did speak with the highway superintendent. Um, he did not have an issue with uh, becoming part of that and assisting with that. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Well, I, uh, I have a question though. Uh, uh, how tall are these? I know they won't interfere with the lines, the electric lines, but how tall do they grow? About 15 feet. Okay, it's, so, a wide, it's a uh, wide branching tree. I'm, I'm sorry. It's what? It's a, a wide branching no, tree, not a tall tree. Okay. And what about the shrubs that you, you uh, talk about in, in the project? What, how, how big are they and what are they? Um, this would be like a uh, clethora or um, which is sweet bush and native um, service berry. There are a variety of service berries that all provide food for birds and shelter. So in that group of um, low, low but uh, spreading, but, you know, generally about five or six feet high maximum, but uh, spreading so that they can stabilize the shore, the stream bed, and and provide protection and food for the wildlife. Okay, and um, it, where I'm uh, 
leading up to is, well, do you see any of these things that you're planting going to obstruct the view of the, of the residences uh, behind it? Uh, no, and that's a very good question. The idea would definitely not be to obstruct, but to beautify. Um, the red buds are very beautiful flowering trees, and there's so little actual land there or soil-based land that would you we would be able to plant that would obstruct any view. We're, we're going to have to really pick um, what really pick our way to find some a place to dig and for the trees to secure. So they'll be probably lower down on the lake line rather than high up. That's about probably a five foot uh, slope there. Sarah, you might want to consider a winter berry as well so that Absolutely. you have you know, different uh, seasons. Yes, that's, that's a great suggestion. Um, I have a question for you. Um, the town has not made a decision yet uh, if we're going to uh, apply to Sullivan Renaissance as well. If we did, we'd have to, you know, we work in conjunction with your project. When are you planning to have your application submitted? Jane? The, yeah. We have to, May, um, March 1st is the deadline. Okay, March 1st, oh yeah. wow. That's yep. right in the corner. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And we're Another one other thing, we're also going to work with the library. They're looking to uh, fix the planter boxes. So instead of for them going into another grant, a mini grant, we offered to work with the library to cover that expense in our grant. Oh, that's nice. Okay. And you're it's a community beautification you're you're going for. It looks like it, yeah. Okay. We did it Wait, last I have a question. Yeah, I have a question. One another question. <laughs> do, do you foresee that you you're going to need some DEC clearance because it is a, a body of water that empties into the deep uh, Delaware? You, uh, you mentioned I, a bunch of you know a bunch of organizations that are behind it, but uh, I didn't see the DEC in there. I don't know if you need the, the approval of them either. Just a question, if maybe you should be looking into that. Um, I will absolutely contact them and and find that information out before digging, <laughs> if permission's granted. Usually you have to submit the permissions with uh, the application. Yeah, that's yes. Does the board have any issues as far as what the request is or any further comments regarding the quest? Well, I don't, as long as it doesn't uh, obstruct the views of the uh, residents. Yeah, I think it's a great project. What the beautification group is looking for is permission from the board. And Karen, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, That's correct. From the permission from the board for uh, the purposes of planting uh, along the side of Little Lake Erie uh, for the purposes of applying for a Sullivan Renaissance grant application. Correct. Second that motion. Yeah. Okay, I just apparently put that in the form of a motion. I have a second from Jill. Um, Jane? Aye. Jill? Aye. Al? Aye. And Bruce? Aye. And I'm an aye. So there you go. Good luck. Thank That's you. great news. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Oh. 5.5 .5 is to set the public hearing uh, for the public review of the draft comprehensive plan. Uh, there's going to be two different ones. The first one will be for the Comprehensive Planning Committee, uh, which would be set for March 22nd, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. to be held via Zoom. And the second would be a public hearing to hear public comment on the comprehensive uh, draft comprehensive plan to the town board. And that would be April 6th at 6.30 p.m. also via Zoom. 
I would put that in the form of a motion. I'll uh, second. I have a second from Ruth. Jane? Aye. Jill? Aye. Now? Aye. Bruce? Aye. And I am an aye. Is there any other new business before the board that the board members have that I have not? Uh, number six, we're going to move to public comment because we will be taking an executive session. Um, so I will open the floor to public comments. Ben, I don't know. Can you hear me? This is Star. Just Star. Of course not. Okay. I, I hear you. Um, I, okay, good. If I may speak on something uh, that is related to the request about the Narrowsburg Beautification Group, I've been kicking around an idea of possibly putting another mural, a B mural or other, um, on the side of the town hall that faces the library. And I wanted to know if that is possible for us to do. We would of course have to coordinate it with the town for permission and for how big an, a mural and what was there. But I did wanna bring that up and just see if, if that could be done. I think um, I think probably we'd, have done, to see, I probably we'd have to see what the mural is, right? Yeah, we, I, well, yeah, we yeah I, I, I don't think that's a problem. Ben, what was it's your comment though? Go... I did. Ben, I, start... I want to know. If... I'm oh, oh, sorry. The only thing I was saying, Joe, was it would have to, you know, the board would have to be able to do, like Jane said, take a look at, you know, what the whole thing is. I don't think we can really give much of an answer with no information. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't, I just ahead, didn't Star. feel that there was any point to going ahead with, with trying to line all this stuff up. Of course, we would have to coordinate it with the town. But if the town just flatly says, we don't want any paintings or anything else on that side of the building, for whatever reason, that would be something that I would need to know. And I think the, the beautification group, even if they went along with that, you know, would want to know before we started doing any kind of extensive planning. Well, you know, to be honest with you, Star, just off the top of my head, I'm seeing the outside of the building where we have those covered windows, you know, mm -hmm. that are at the theater. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can only make those look better. <laughs> Such a vote of confidence. Thank you. But if it was if it was restricted well, to I'm just serious. that, okay. And I I, no, I not, appreciate I'm that. Yeah, no. I, I, I'm just saying you came up with a good idea, and off the top of my head, before I would say no, I'd be like, well, you know, we've got these windows that are boarded and boarded up. You know, much like what Eagle Fest did twenty some years ago on Main Street. You know, mm -hmm. we took vacant, vacant buildings and we put murals in the windows. So, I mean, that's something to look at if you're, you're looking for a canvas and there's an idea that kind of gets it started for you. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. not, not being smart about anything. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Is there any other public comment that's out there? If there's no further public comment, I'm going to make a motion that we enter into executive session for the purpose of discussing the employment history of a particular individual and also to discuss the acquisition of real property. I have a motion, a second. Second. I have a second from Al. Bruce? Aye. Al? Aye. Jill? Aye. And Jane? Aye. Thank you. We'll be moving to executive session and then we will come back into the public meeting for those that wish to stay. I'm gonna put everybody in the waiting room and then I'll let you all back in shortly. It's gonna take a second. If they would stop moving faster than I can. Thank you. 
executive session we are going to move into number nine for closing items 9.1 board comment everybody can have their five seconds <laughs> dinner <laughs> yeah okay meeting reminder 9.2 um so we've got those public hearings coming up uh one for the comp plan public hearing with the comp plan committee on March 22nd, and then another uh, town board hearing, public hearing with the comp plan for April the 6th. Both of those are 6.30 and both of them will be on Zoom and the IDs will be posted. And our next regular meeting will be March the 9th at 6.30 p.m. And you have a workshop on the 2nd of March. Mm -hmm. That's yep. it, right? Uh, yeah. Forty seconds. Thank you. Is the on here? No. No. Too bad because she could have known one. A motion to adjourn. If there's no other comment from the board, I move we adjourn. That's it. Al made the motion. I'll take your second. I get a second from Jane. Jill. Hi. Jane? Aye. Al? Aye. Bruce? Aye. And myself and I. Don't kick Ken out yet in case he's got something for us. Oh. He can kick anybody else out. Oh, yeah. Ken, do you need us for anything at all, or we're good? I think we're good at this point, Ben. I don't think I need anything else. Thank you, Ken. Okay. I'll give you a call tomorrow. And work on that contract and uh, I'll get some other stuff over to you. Okay. Okay.